Hello, welcome family of God. It's Pastor Detina, Meditating Life Center in Louisville, Kentucky with our service from January the 8th, 2023. Happy New Year again, you all. Um, today, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, some upcoming Sundays or maybe a day during the week, we're going to do a review because I want to make sure that we are able to hold on to the things we've already learned, what God has already told us and revealed to us. I want to go back over it. And I do know that sometimes, you know, all these themes, especially Jesus, is going to come up every time. But I want us to go back and see the pattern that he brought us through in this new, you know, up to this point. Um, and see what, you know, if we see a message in that, in the messages that he's given us, maybe something else will be revealed. I'm not going to do it today. And yes, if you hear me sound a little nasal, yeah, I got a little stuffy nose. I don't have a cough or anything. I just have a stuffy nose for some reason. I don't know what's going on with that. But we're going to go on with it. Um, today and um, so just get your Bible ready or your device ready where you can look look up the scripture that we go to today. Um, thank you for everybody who's, who's given to this ministry, you've given towards you know whatever we're trying to do. You can come see the books, whatever. We're still you know, putting it out, putting it forth, you know, using it for ministerial things, and we're saving the rest so that we can get a physical location. Um, and if you missed any of the services, you can please subscribe to the YouTube channel which is Minister Detina on YouTube. Or you can join us on Facebook all the time and like and subscribe and share these videos if they've been a blessing to you. It's Minister Detina or Detina Hampton Heard or it is Pastor Detina at Meditating Life Center. Those are two of my pages on Facebook. So it's Minister Detina. That's with Detina Hampton Heard. That's on Facebook. That's Pastor Detina with the Meditating Life Center. That's on Facebook. And then we also have Foundational Bible Study Group. And that's also on Facebook. So amongst those three, we probably have about a thousand people that follow us. We call it the fellowship, our online fellowship, till we get that physical location. But if you'd like to join us where we are now, just uh, contact me and I'll let you know how you can join us right now. Or if you want to give, if you want to just personally gift me, you can um, cash out me. It shows you my money hurry. I can't even remember it. Okay, you can cash at me, uh, Datina Heard, the dollar sign, and then capital D A T I N A, uh, capital H E R D. And that's just if you're gifting me personally. But if you want to get to this ministry, contact me and I'll give you the various ways uh, that we can, that you can um, donate to the ministry. We've had people do that and we're just so blessed by it. And keep talking to us, keep messaging, keep calling, keep liking, keep sharing. All right. We want to lead us in a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you today, God, for this day that you have made, Lord. Uh, no matter what's going on, Lord, we have a reason to have joy because you sent your son, Lord, to deliver us from our sin and to give us hope that cannot be taken away from us, to give us joy in the midst of our troubles and our sorrows that cannot be taken away from us and the peace that surpasses all understanding in Christ Jesus. So we thank you, God, for being you. We thank you, God, for being there for us. We thank you because you'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. You're, you're our friend. We just love you, God. Even though our love cannot come close to the love you must have for us. So we just thank you and ask that you touch and bless today in a mighty way, Lord. Everyone who has a need, Lord, and we know we all have needs, but you know what we need before we even ask you for it. So we ask that you address us at our point of need, God, right now. And let's be bathed in the power of your Holy Spirit. Let us be confident in the plan that you have for our lives, Lord. Let us stand strong even in our hospital beds, Lord, or on our sick bed, even if in our shortness, our shortcomings, or anything that might look to other people that will prevent us from even being able to give you glory. But we know that you can use us. So, Lord, we say use us today and touch failing or healing bodies right now in the name of Jesus and minds, hearts, souls, and spirits, Lord. We just ask right now to you as the healer, you as the provider, you as being good to us. We just, as our banner, as our battle axe, the one who protects, the one who just loves, Lord, just touch everyone. Let them know who you are today. And if there's someone who does not know your son Jesus in the pardoning of their sins, that today be their day of salvation, that they take you up on your offer of forgiveness and come to you through your son Jesus and become a member of this family of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> and so we're going to start off with our scripture. Actually, what's our scripture? Where's your bulletin? What's the scripture? It says scripture on there. What is it? At the very top. What is, what is our scripture? 
Where's it coming from? We we'll look in the Bible. Go straight across. That's good. Jay. What does it say? Oh, uh, Galatians nine to ten. What chapter? Six. Part? Yes. Okay, so you know, all you all who watch, you know that our foundational scripture for this ministry for Meditating Life Center is Galatians chapter six, verses nine through ten. And so <laughs> we read it. It says. So let's what not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. Yes. And our mission statement for Meditating Life Center is... We're meditating, meditating on God's, God's word, we're communing with God, and abiding in Jesus. Jesus. Our vision statement, number one, it, it should, should never be Christians, be Christians hurting another, another Christian. Christian. And I don't know if we have new people, but refer back to the Galatians 6, um, verses 9 through 10, where it says to do good to everyone, but especially to those in family, family of faith. Amen. So it should never be Christians hurting another Christian. Number two, regardless of religion, affiliation, or denomination, if we consider ourselves good, moral, or righteous as this family of God, we must avoid and or repent of wrongdoing, sin, and or crime. And number three in our vision statement, we share what we learn. We don't just criticize the ignorance, wrongdoing, or foolish behavior. We come alongside and model good, right, wise, godly, and righteous thinking, behavior, obedience, and decision making. Amen. Because how many people know you're being watched? Amen. Everybody's watching. Constantly. Yes. As Christian people, to see if you're living out what you say that you believe. And um, so we hope that people are not turned away or turned off because of our hypocrisy. Who wants to pray? I do. <laughs> okay. Who can pray? Thank you, Pastor. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for allowing us to, to gather together to rightly divide your word, iron sharpening iron. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us now and in the future. Continue to walk with our pastor as she goes and ministers to the world in jesus blessed and holy name we pray amen amen so our congregational song today is an easy one i think most people know it um we've been trying to stick to some easy not necessarily easy i mean they still are praise and worship um but songs that we know will edify and glorify the lord but that most of you all know though uh, as we grow and you know we'll have like praise teams or guests or things that we'll um, we're not singing the hope. I don't know what all that is. It's, how many of you have been watching? Like sometimes I, I've been printing the lyrics, so we heard the story about who knows what the lyrics might be. But this is a song that everybody should know. Not everybody on the whole earth, but most people know. Everybody in this room should know. And it's "I Love You, Lord" today. And we're only gonna do the same familiar verses. Okay, don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> like the don't go tell on the mountain. Twelve or whatever. stanzas later. <laughs> Well, the words were totally wrong, so we were just standing there going, like, what should we say? We were, we were looking at those. I printed some remix or something. I don't know. Anyway. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Sing it again. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up 
and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. to us or give to, to me, give to someone, give of your time, give of your treasure, or give of your overflow, but be show God that you are a giver, that you're grateful for what he gave you, go find a ministry, go find a charity, you know, vet them, you know, find out that, you know, this is something that you really believe in what they're doing, but make sure that you're a giver, and that is a blessing in giving. Uh, ask me you want to bless the offering, thank, for the, thank God for the offering. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you, O oh Lord, for giving us another day to magnify your name like the song earlier. We really appreciate everything <clears throat> you do for us and what we do for you. We appreciate everything you have offered and given to us, and we're happy to do the same for you. Amen. 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 Let's talk about this song. I guess we'll go on today, I think. How long is it? How, how far have we gone? 14. That's pretty good. So I put the song, I'm going to try to sing it. Um, the song before the sermon today. I remember how you told me mm -hmm. 
that life may not be easy and everything I, that I need you've already given me this is me saying this you know, listen. I remember how you told me I can trust you completely so why am I doubting when you prove that you'd fight for me you walked me through fires you pulled me from flames if you're in this with me i won't be afraid so when the smoke billows higher oh and higher and it feels like i can barely breathe i walk through these fires Cause you're walking with me I'm changed by your mercy I'm covered by your peace I'm living out the victory Doesn't mean I won't feel the heat You walked me through fires You pulled me from flames If you're in this with me I won't be afraid So when the smoke billows higher Oh and higher And it feels like I can barely breathe I'll walk through these fires Cause you're walking with me I'm gonna stop right there Cause I can just feel my voice is about to crack Cause of this call today So y'all can look that up It's by a guy named Jordan St. Cyr And uh Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for another day of walking us through fires, walking us through storms, walking us through all kinds of troubles that are going on in this world today, being with us and, and empowering us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we just give you glory as this word goes forth today. Lord, give us a word from on high so that we can be more empowered by you, keep our confidence in you, keep our joy and peace in you, and keep our unity in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, today, like I think I told you, I was just going to open this Bible. I'm going to open our Bibles and we're going to see where we end up. And where we are is Romans 5. That's where we are. That we're just going to talk about it. So in your Bible, as we turn to Romans 5, it's near the back. In your Bible, Romans chapter 5. It's a good chapter. It's called the Romans Road, the road to salvation. So we're in Romans 5, starting at verse 1. I'm just going to go to the New Testament where it says Acts and then get to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. You're way too far back. I know. You need to go up the other, go the other direction totally. You're way too far. So we're in Romans chapter 5 starting at Acts, Romans. Chapter 5. Mm -hmm. um, Brett, you want to read the first, first verse to the first, first couple of verses? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Okay. That's you can read one more. Read, read verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience, and experience, hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts <coughs> by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. See, and that's a really good looking guy, because I'll say what we're going to probably review, and that's the kind of things we've been talking about. He's in the King James Version. And uh, I'll go over, over to the New Living Translation, and it says, Therefore, since we've been made right with God, right by our faith. Remember, we've been talking about faith the whole time. That's how we started out in the Thessalonians, having that childlike faith. Remember, that faith that leads us to be in the family of God, where we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And the faith is what we're believing and hoping for. And then the trust that we have in God. We have in faith because no man has looked upon God and is still alive to tell us about it. And so we, we're going by faith. That's what we're holding on to. It said we were made right. We were justified. That means like when you're guilty, but yet someone sees you as innocent, you've been forgiven, 
you know, and that's by our faith, you know, putting our faith in Jesus Christ. So we make peace with God because we know that before we before we come to Jesus Christ, we are the enemies of God because of the sin of Adam and the sin that we continue to commit is unforgiving sin, basically, with God because we have no relationship with him except through the Son. And so we've been justified by faith in the Son of Jesus Christ, and now we have peace with God. So today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and the pardoning of your sin today, it's a day of salvation so that you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to guide you through this life and all these troubles that are going on. But it says that we have peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. And because of this faith, Christ has brought us to a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. So when we say that we're confident, a lot of times you say, well, I'm not confident. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we don't. You say we're joyful, but I don't know what to be joyful about. But if you're not happy about anything, be happy that you're a child of God. Amen. Because you do have something to look forward to. You have a you have being with you. You have the Holy Spirit that gives you um, remembrance of what God has promised you as a promise keeper. We have the hope of heaven and getting to see our loved ones again. And doesn't that just bring you joy? By the time you lost your mom, when you know, your mom passed away, your dad passed away. Um, I'm sure a lot of people passed away. Ask me, you have people that have passed away. You know, they've gone to be with the Lord and. Isn't that like something to give you hope for? Something that makes you happy that you one day you'll get to see God? Is that a, get to see Jesus? Mm -hmm. I mean, we see Jesus now. Sometimes I see Jesus. You know, I can't tell you exactly what he looks like, but I know he was in. I was in his presence. Okay, so I told you the story before when I was sick. I've seen angels, you know, in my house and things like that. But that doesn't compare to the glory of heaven, living there with God in the new heaven and the new earth, becoming one and being with God. And so we are confident in that. You have to be confident in what you're believing about God. We have to grow confident as we mature and see our experience with God. Amen. And it makes us happy. Doesn't it make you happy when things work out like they're supposed to? And you go, I don't know how that happened, but I'm so happy. You know, and even when it doesn't work out like we want it to, and you're still standing, especially as you get older, you go, man, I would have been on the floor in tears and kicking and rolling. I told one of my students, you know, we just went into a new semester at school. And it's like, you know, and we're gonna, I'm going to have a new class starting Monday, but my class that I had for this first semester, I was like, do you see how much you matured? You know, they call me by my name now. <laughs> You don't call me other things. Okay, and look how you don't cry at the drop of a hat. I tell the student, I said, you should be proud of yourself that you don't, you know, just fall apart so easily over every little thing anymore. So you all have matured greatly. And sure, they still have work to do. They're like 14 to 15. But, I mean, and aren't we all, you know, don't we all have work to still be done? But I'm, you could just see the confidence. Their little backs just straightened up a little further. They got you know, a little tighter and they got a little smile on their face because somebody recognized, you know, how far that they've come compared to the way that they were behaving before. And that's what God, you know, all of heaven cheers, you know, for us is on our, God's on our side when we mature in the times when we would have felt fallen apart. And that does not mean that sometimes we don't cry, so, you know, trouble in my way, you gotta cry sometimes, things hurt. But we're able to come back centered, you know, even we have joy in our troubles because we know they they produce all this fruit that Brother Tom just read to us. He said we can rejoice too. Brother Tom told us in verse 3, when we run into problems, that's when you see your verse 3. I'm sorry, I'm going to be wiping my nose. I told you it's running over. Um, we can rejoice too when we run into problems. This is the new living translations and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. Amen. And that's what happens, you know, like, like Jesus learned through suffering. Remember, we talked about that a little last week, I think it was. Like the things he experienced and taught, it, what, taught him what it was like to be a person, the things that we go through. And then he taught us how to go through them, though, being God, you know, and that's really good. And we help each other to learn how to go through things. That's what you remember when you were like a little kid in kindergarten? We were talking about this the other day. He was the cutest little thing. He went to a school that really didn't have, you know, accommodations for kids who might need a little extra help or something. And he came out and he would just constantly be held accountable for things that he couldn't understand yet. And he would come out, they were called the bullfrogs, and they got flies as a, as a uh, reward. And he came out and tears was in his big, pretty eyes, and he said, we say, what's the matter? He said, they took all my flies. They took all my flies. And you probably don't remember that. But now when things are, do. And when, you know, and we were like, okay, we need to fix this because things are not working right. But he doesn't, I mean, you're to the point now, you know, when things... 
don't work out like you want them to, but you try to figure out a little bit better what's going on. Um, you, you go like, well, sometimes, you know, this doesn't work out or that doesn't work out. Or I can cry out for help. You learn mm -hmm. all these life strategies, don't you think so? You know, and you look back on that little boy and you feel sorry for him and you go like, I'm so glad that I learned that everything is just not about me. Amen. So that people are, are, you know, people have flaws and faults and things. And when I go out in the world, if you was to see that same little boy, what would you tell him? If you see a little boy that's, that's like that, what would you say to him? Looking at now all these years later, what would you say to him? I'd say, don't cry. There's nothing to worry about anymore. Why? I'd say things will get better soon. Oh, amen. Amen. Why would they amen. get better? Because you know things just do. Oh, my if God. you ignore your problems, you can get rid of them. Instead of running away from them, they'll get better. Because you are, have the heart to fix them. Yeah, our time just passes. No matter, no matter how broken you are. Yeah, time passes and things do they do get better or do they get different? That's what I was like, they become different. Uh, we were looking at things, you know, I, I think I've told people before, you have a diary. I had a diary and man, I was going through it and I went back and I looked at my diary and I was like, dang, it, I forgot all about this stuff. So sometimes, you, you know, we constantly talk about self-examination and going back to help you remember how far you've come and that even some things, even if they didn't go your way, because we're not trying to be pie in the sky by and by about everything because some things they're gonna hurt for your whole life every time you think about them, but you move past them because you're, now you're doing something else that's important to you or you realize there was nothing you could do about them or whatever. But you start realizing, I'm gonna survive it. I'm gonna be okay. And I have a new chapter. I'm just gonna turn the page and God is with me. And so we, you know, for a Christian, we have that extra that we need because we have God on our side. And so I, I would just, I would, that, look at, uh, Brother Aspen telling us how, what we're supposed to do when we say we go and share. We don't just watch people suffer. We don't just watch people go through it. But we remember when we see people, we remember what happened to us. And we go like, no, little boy, you don't have to cry because it's not, maybe it's not fair what they've done. Uh, maybe I can talk to them. Maybe you, you have those strategies that you remember so you can lift up somebody else. Amen. That's what God wants. Is look at he's still a young person and he gets it. Like I, I've got knowledge and wisdom and experience that I can share with other people about how God has still brought me forward in spite of what people did that hurt my feelings. I'm still able to stand and and be able to be okay, and I'm able to help someone else to be able to stand and be okay. And so that's what, you know why because it says when you go through those problems they help develop endurance they help you learn how to stand in spite of trouble and then in the times of trouble and then and it says and that endurance this is new living translation develop strength of character amen what strength of character strength of character means like it shows who you really are when things are not going your way do you sit up and become a criminal? Do you try to hurt other people? Do you just fall down in a ball of misery and stay there? Or do you go like, I know that God is with me. I know my parents are with me. I know my friends are with me. I know I can do this. I know, you know, I can go get me some help. It develops strength of character, the way that we respond during our troubles. Even if we respond negatively, that I pray to God that we learn that that's not the answer because then we go to prison or we, some people die because they had poor character. They made poor choices in the person that they were at the time trouble came. And so it shows us who we are and the corrections that need to be made. And thank God for Jesus and thank God for the Holy Spirit and thank God for the family, amen, of God that comes alongside. Like Brother Aspen just said, it says, little boy, you're going to be all right. Oh, I just made one clap. He says, little boy, you're going to be all right because I went through the same stuff and I'm still standing, amen. And so it develops your strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation, amen. It helps us to be able to be mature. And what it is that we're believing based upon our experience with God, our experience with this world, our experience in being an individual person uh, on our individual journeys as well as our corporate journeys. And so we have that hope of God and the hope that the, the knowledge and the truth that God's with us, that he's going to take care of us, that we are saved, we are his people. Amen. And, and as we mature, we, we get that confident hope. We get that confidence in knowing we can manage in this life. We get that confidence in knowing whatever we need, we're going to have it. Whatever we need to know, we're going to learn it. Amen. We're going to be okay. 
and this hope will not lead to disappointment. Remember we were talking about the 23rd Psalm when he says, um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's a declarative statement. It cannot happen. I've been young and now I'm old and I've never seen a righteous forsaken nor their seed begging for bread. God directs us to where the bread is. Amen. He directs us to give out that loaf of bread. You will never be without what you actually need as God's person. And he's saying one of the things that we need and Jesus promised was hope. And that hope in God will never lead to disappointment. Sometimes we feel disappointed. Sometimes we feel frustrated. But in this season, the Lord keeps telling me, come back to center. Come back to what you know. Come back to getting your emotions in check. Amen. That doesn't mean you don't experience them. It means you do not ever let them override the truth that look at how far I've come. Look at the things that are available to me in order to help give me the support and encouragement that I need, starting with God, starting with the Holy Spirit, starting with my own self, starting and moving on out to others and the family of God, looking on out to looking at the resources that God has provided, looking at for all the experience, the education, the the wisdom, all the things that God has just poured into us that should help us to come back to center and not fall apart or give up. I mean, if we don't give up, you'll get a harvest of blessings. And it makes us even happier, doesn't it? Oh my God, when things work out, because you go, I didn't think I wanted to do that. But when I, once I did it, man, I finally got to where I wanted to be. I mean, like me, I've had a lot of jobs that I, you know, I like some and some things I liked about them and some I got mistreated in them. And then, you know, I'm sure y'all working people, you know, been working a long time or even a short time. Um, you know, you know, you still need to work or whatever. And the job I have now, I love my job and I'm old now. And I've had a job that I love so much, but the politics and things were so horrible. I grieved when I left that job. I kept trying to get hired back in that job, but they weren't hiring or they didn't have positions for me because some, it's funny that when I left the job, most of the people causing the problems for me left too. It's really weird. And so I kind of grieved that job, but I think if I would have been at that job, I would not be pastoring this, this ministry. I don't think I would have had the journey of all the ministry, ministries that I have assisted um, and, and grown in, being positioned in, being under you know uh, the good parts of good leaders and meeting a lot of people that brought out the best in me. So all of this has been part of the journey. And now I'm in a job, I just love it. Even with all the troubles and things like that, I'm a teacher that gets paid for teaching. <laughs> and then, and no, I'm not rich or anything, but I was teaching for free all over the world on podcasts and everything. And now I even get paid to do what I love to do and what I'm called to do. And I get to influence people at a younger age instead of always having to read what I call read, raise grown people. So I'm, at this old age, I'm really happy. And so I'm not, I'm not, my hope did not lead to disappointment when I kept saying, man, I just hope that one day when I'm teaching people will respect it and, you know, and give honor to it instead of getting mad or jealous or trying to undermine me. And now, you know, once I got myself in check, right, and I started going, like, well, why are you doing it? You're doing it because the Lord called you to teach. Amen. So there's always going to be a reward in that if you don't give up. And so I ended up teaching it in school again. And it's like, I love it. Amen. God, and, and I'm a different person. My demeanor is better. My attitude is better. My confidence is off the chain. And going, you know, not to say you don't get shook. <laughs> Sometimes some of the stuff, you, and your heart doesn't get broken. You know, these children are going through it in these days, you know, but it's like I'm a grown woman and when I'm standing there and I'm just like, who is this person, you know, that the Lord has brought this far, so don't give up. Amen. You, you're getting your character developed, you, you're headed somewhere. And and that hope in God is not going to disappoint you. Just don't give up. And it says, for we know how dearly God loves us. We know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Amen. And that's what we need to know is that we are loved. Amen. It doesn't matter what people are saying. The family better come on and rally around somewhere. God's going to send somebody, right? He might send you. He might send me. Amen. To help encourage people. Amen. And uh, when they maybe have be down or being mistreated. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, you got to get that alone time with God. So you come back center. That's the word for this season that the Lord has given me. You come back to the truth about it. Go back over your life. Remember how you got where you are right now. God loves you. Amen. That, and, and even if you can't even think of it like the yucky love stuff, you know, it's not like that. It's like 
I'm still standing. And people, a lot of things have happened to me and a lot of people mistreated me, but there must be some worth and value in me because there's something that picks me up and puts me back on my feet and say, I don't deserve this and I'm going to keep on keeping on because I'm not going to let the devil stop me because I know that there's something, I don't know if it's God, whatever, but there's some worth and value to me. Amen. And don't you know that God will send people to verbalize that. If you can, inside of yourself, you can verbalize that and then you will meet the right people and they will verbalize that. You know what? You're a pretty cool dude. You're a pretty cool person. You don't even know that what a wonderful person you are. Amen. Even with your flaws. Somebody gave me a heart one time and they says, I love you despite your flaws. Amen. And so remember that. And the family loves you no matter how anybody treats you. I'm going to read one more verse. It says, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for, um, for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. This is one of my favorite verses. Ask me you want to read that in verse 8. Rata, can you help him find verse 8? And then we're going to probably, we might do the whole thing. I want to get end around it. Verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. <clears throat> but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since by his blood he did all, all this for us as sinners, how much more will he do for us now now that he has declared us not guilty wow and what time will you read verse 10 for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life is that what all it says i think on that one I can't. It was certainly being I'm looking at New Living Translation. Because we I'm trying to follow you and read a different translation. I <laughs> Same through like with us. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us what? Look at just you know, verse 11. Wonderful. What is your, Friends of God. Friends of God. Oh my goodness. What is your saying, verse 11 in King James? And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Okay, our, our version said we have now become friends with God. And that's awesome. Remember that song? I'm a friend of God. He calls me friend. And so that's one voice says, somebody might be, and I'm going to end it right now. It says somebody, you know, a person, most people ain't gonna die for you even if you're a wonderful person. Amen. So you do all this, you know, this character's building up, all these uh, trials and all these problems. You stood up and you did all these things and then you still got into a whole bunch of trouble and somebody might even be totally capable of helping you. But Paul says, heck, it's some, most people ain't gonna even die for you uh, even if you're this great person. It says that some people might be willing to, but most people are not going to do it. But God showed his love for us in this, that yet while we were sinners, Christ died for us. I mean, what what amazing love that someone would take your place. We watch Perry Mason all the time. They be letting people get ready to go to the gas chamber. Amen. And they go like, well, I, I, ne I would have never let you go. <laughs> you know, we don't know about that. Mm -hmm. Perry wouldn't have figured it out. You know, yeah. it looked like if you was headed for the gas chamber, I, I wouldn't think it's my friend. <laughs> and then, but yeah, you know, they said most people are not going to stand up for you. They, but yeah, while we were sinners, Christ died for, for us. And they said, he, so we were made right by him, by his death. And that means we're not going to be condemned. He's not going to let anything happen to us that doesn't pass through God first. He's on our side. And so we don't have any condemnation because we are in Christ Jesus. And not only that, because he saved our life, it made us reconcile to God. We are now called God's friends. And remember, Jesus said it to the disciples: "You not, you know, you just, you're not my slaves. You're my friends now because you know me and you know everything that I know. So now you're my friends. And so guess what, y'all? Not only are we family, but we're friends. Amen. We might have to work on our friendships and things like that. But I love this when we open this Bible. You know, I wouldn't prescribe you do that all the time, but I'll tell you just it's better than not opening it. Amen. You know, mm -hmm. put your finger and point. <laughs> it, it beats not. Um, reading it at all, but this is a very important passage of scripture to remind us who we are in Christ's family. 
And then it says that we've been made right with God by our faith. We have peace with God. We are friends of God because of the death of his son who died for our sins on the cross, raised on the third day, and seated on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and me, and we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so if listening you know, to this teaching, this sermon, these words, and print your heart, print your conscience today, you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sin. Today is the day of salvation. If you say, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I understand that. Forgive me for my sins. I want to be with you, God. And so I do know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for every last one of my sins. And he was raised on the third day. You know, I keep on telling people that need it. Hey, remember science, they go like, I think, I believe, we believe this is what happened. We think this is what happened. Because people keep saying, well, science is 100%. No, it's not. They were not there, okay? They're guessing and they're believing based on what they see, okay? And, and what they cannot see. So there's not a comparison between science and, and, and spirituality. It's according to what you're believing about God, what you're believing about something else. So get that out of the equation. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for every last one of your sins? And mine. Amen. And if you do believe that today, then you can become a friend of God by accepting him as your Lord and Savior. That he, he was raised on the third day and he is alive. There's many people that saw him. Just like if you believe any history, then you believe that Jesus was raised because and you believe there was a Jesus. Go research it for all y'all, you know, smart people that need to know. And are still looking for a way to avoid the truth about God because our time is growing short. Amen. He's coming back again. Amen. To come for his church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It will prick your conscience. Amen. Every time you're doing something wrong, after a while, you won't even need the prick that much because your heart will change. You will be born again. Your mind and what's important to you, like the Romans 5 says, your character will be developed. Even if you, you know, something I'll say to people who say, oh, la, 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 all this God stuff. Okay, take God out of the equation for some of y'all that say, I ain't ready to accept that. Being a decent human being is required no matter if there's a God or not. Amen? Okay? So you want to be the kind of person that says, like, I need character development. But for us who believe God, we know we can't do it by ourselves. We need that Holy Spirit to prick our conscience. We need each other to hold each other accountable and want better for each other. We need each other to have that love in Jesus Christ, the kind of love that he says that he wants for us that cannot be taken away no matter what we do, even if we have to put up boundaries to you know, for, to protect ourselves from our behaviors and things so that we don't get off the road. Amen. But we still never lose a love for each other. So if you made that confession of faith that you know that you died on the cross for your sins, you want you want forgiveness from God, you want to be the friend of God, amen, and that you want the gift of the Holy Spirit, and, and uh, then welcome to the family. You're in the family. We want you. We love you. Amen. We want to be there for you as God leads. Amen. And go find you a church that believes, you know, God, that reads that Bible, that teaches Bible that will use your use your gifting will help bring you along. Will there be accountability? Sure, you get caught on your mess, hopefully, you know, because nobody wants to stay in sin on purpose, in a, but in a right way and not like always nice <laughs> because we don't like to be corrected, but not in an abusive or mean or cruel way either. So find you the right ministry. You might have to try several of them where you are a good fit. You can be friends with, I, I've worked at a lot of ministries. I mean, for so many people, because that's one of the things I'm called to do. And if your ministry needs that kind of person, contact me uh, where I go and I help facilitate teaching. Because a lot of people, they're afraid to stand up in front of people, at, even in church. And so uh, God helps us to bring each other up. Just like Paul went and raised people up. I'm one of those people, I go out and I help raise up teachers and leaders. And, and I sit there and I help facilitate them, learning the skills and the process of being a leader of people. So I teach church protocol. If you would like to uh, contact me, and I will come and help you with your church protocol and help you with your teachers to learn how to stand up and be prepared, properly prepared to teach, you know, teaching that moral, those morals and ethics and study habits and things like that. So you can contact me. I, I do teach those things. But find your church that you can um, feel welcome in and that you're loved in and that you're raised up in, that you learn and you serve. And until then, or is, even with that, stay with us online on Facebook, uh, Minister Detina, Pastor Detina on Facebook, um, Foundational Bible Study on Facebook, Minister Detina on YouTube. Subscribe to that. And then you join us every week. Uh, usually I post our bulletin. Uh, because we did something different today. We didn't have a bulletin, we, uh, but we will have one maybe later since now we know where the Lord led us. So stay with us each week, and you stay blessed.